Hello, everyone. I'm Lynn Hunsaker, and I'm excited to talk to you today about this very important topic of increasing trust. You may have noticed the series of uh, LinkedIn events that I've been doing all around these uh, basic ideas for how do we increase ease of work and ease of doing business in our organizations to drive organic growth. Organic growth means that you have great retention among your employees, your partners, and your customers, so that you're growing through that uh, increased knowledge that you have together and not letting that knowledge uh, go out the door. Uh, these relationships are so precious with uh, employees, partners, and customers. We need them for our uh, interpersonal as well as uh, financial growth and well-being. I see Mohammed is here. Thank you for uh, for joining us today. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to be starting up fresh here. So I'm going, if you've uh, happened to listen to me uh, just recently, uh, bear with me. We're going to get to some really juicy things. Now, increasing trust is really today talking about internal uh, trust with your peers in your own department, as well as the people who you interface with in your division or your geography, and then your counterparts in other parts of the company. And then you can actually take what we're talking about today to extend to your external partners and customers. Um, increasing trust, I've talked about uh, a lot, for example, last week, internal partnering, how to toggle, we're going to revisit that topic uh, because we did introduce the, the equation for trust and I promised you that this would really seal the, uh, the insights into how do you toggle across those partnering levels. So we'll get to that today. I wanted to bring your attention to two other resources. Uh, one is the LinkedIn newsletter that I'm publishing bi-weekly called Ease of Work and Business for Organic Growth. And you can access that newsletter anytime by uh, typing tinyurl.com slash ease hyphen growth hyphen news. So that's tinyurl.com slash ease growth news. Also, I wanted to refer you to my recent article on customerthink.com called How Trust is the Basis for Value in Customer and Employee Experience. And that one you can see at customerthink.com slash author slash Clear action. The reason I'm bringing up this article is because there are so many really eye-opening things that I discovered by looking at what Edelman Trust Barometer has just published this year about the strengths and weaknesses that we have in our society globally. Uh, no country really accepted um, having a, a much more urgent need to increase trust now than ever before. And one of the things I loved about the way that Edelman Trust Barometer described it is that trust is not the same thing as sentiment or reputation. Uh, trust goes a step further. Uh, they uh, explained that tr sentiment is a feeling or a perception in the moment. So for example, if you're measuring customer effort or uh, customer satisfaction, or employee effort, employee satisfaction, partner or effort and, and partner satisfaction would all go into the same bucket of sentiment. And reputation is the characterization of your organization by a critical mass. So for example, net promoter score um, would, would fall into that category of reputation. Uh, Edelman Trust Barometer said that trust is a step further because it's the uh, inclination that a person has to buy into something in, in, in the this, this step toward taking a meaningful risk with a person or a company. And Edelman was saying that we're probably missing out by not measuring trust explicitly in customer, employee, and partner surveys and such to really understand the degree to which people are willing to take a risk with us. Uh, it would be a better barometer of how, how well our um, growth is, uh, is assured if we were to measure, it, uh, measure trust 
explicitly. I also really love that uh, Don Peppers and Martha, Roger, Martha Rogers in their book called Extreme Trust called out the difference between trustworthiness and trustability. Trustworthiness means that you generally will you know, have good policies and will do the right thing. But uh, trustability takes it a step further in saying you're proactively um, doing the right thing, doing the right things and doing things right. Um, so I recommend to, that you take a look at those articles for very specific recommendations and better listening, better questions, better transparency, better information sharing, and better ways to gauge and define expectations of all those that we uh, interact with. So when you are shopping, for example, or when you are meeting someone new, you're usually starting out with shared interests. And as you have a conversation, you're building a shared understanding. Like we have a similar perspective on things. Uh, there are facets of this uh, topic that we, we both enjoy. Um, then that leads to shared expectations as you decide to do something together. You're going to meet, you're going to uh, buy, buy or sell, you're going to um, experience something together, that's a shared expectation. Now, when these things become consistent in the execution of them, that is where trust is really established. So I use this formula all the time when I was leading customer experience and quality and other initiatives, marketing initiatives and so forth across the entire organization. In my corporate role, I didn't have direct responsibility over other people or direct authority uh, rather. I had responsibility, but not direct authority. <clears throat> and so I really needed to find those common interests. And I would refer quite often to the company values, the uh, corporate objectives, the initiatives that were very strong in our, our company that we had a shared interest about. We would uh, talk about those shared understandings and reach shared expectations. And then I was very adamant in my own personal um, behavior to be consistent, to, to make sure I followed through on what I promised. And anytime that that was not possible, I would try very hard to be proactive in communicating uh, what the other person could expect. Um, so I found that as I practiced those things and uh, encouraged it, nurtured it in my own organization, we were able to get quite a bit of clout and respect, and especially, most importantly, follow through execution and change, changed improvements uh, very significant improvements to demonstrate the value that we were bringing to the organization. So the uh, hand in hand with that is the equation for trust. And I'm borrowing this from trustedadvisor.com, putting it in my own words, but essentially it's the degree to which you have a, con a concern for others versus yourself in the way that you come across to others. And uh, that is divided by your credibility, your reliability, and your confidability. So what do we mean by that? It's how much people feel that my words, skills, credentials, and how they experience me are believable. That's credibility. Reliability is how much people feel the actions I take and the way they experience me can be relied upon. Concern for others is the degree to which people feel I'm focused on them instead of myself. And confidability is the, the, how much people feel they can confide in me and perceive me as discreet and empathetic. So empathetic means we're demonstrating quality listening. We're asking quality questions. We're mindful of others' expectations and our interdependencies on one another. We're vulnerable. We share that we are afraid or concerned about things or that we weren't perfect. Um, those are all very key to the recipe for confidability. 
Essentially, those last two, concern for others and confidability are the grand weaknesses that we see in any organization around the world. Um, credibility and reliability are so emphasized in our school systems and in our work systems that we uh, have, tend to have stronger muscles there, but uh, greater weaknesses in confidability and concern for others. So that's a real opportunity. One exercise that you would, might, might take is to ask three of your peers what they've observed in how others respond to you. So three peers where you have a common customer of your deliverables, be it your boss or be it your or, or supervisor or uh, better, even better still, who in which organization received these, these things from you and how do they perceive you? So ask three peers to give you a rating, maybe on a scale of one to five, with comments about what they see as strengths and weaknesses in credibility, reliability, confidability, and concern for others as you come across to those that you serve. Also do a self-rating and combine these uh, scores so that you can identify which two of these four factors of the trust equation are your natural strengths or your current strengths at least. Now, uh, when you have identified your top two strengths, that, uh, that will tell you which of the six trust profiles is yours. So this is like a persona or a, a temperament. And uh, while I'm uh, explaining this, if you would like to introduce yourself in terms of uh, where are you located, um, anything else you'd like to share, I'd love to comment on that during this uh, session. And also, if you'd like to tell me what you've seen as the biggest contribution to trust in organizations, especially interpersonal relationships within departments and among departments, I'd love to see what you think is the biggest contribution to trust as you've experienced it uh, so far. Now, if, you, if your top two strengths were reliability and confidability, then your trust profile is the doer. And you can tell, you, you would be, um, you know, if you're talking to someone who is who you're serving, it's because you know you can count on me and get to get the job done and you know you can confide in me. If your top two strengths are confidability and other focus, then your profile is the connector. The combination of credibility and confidability is the catalyst trust profile. Confidability and reliability is the expert profile, probably one of the most uh, common profiles that we see in the population. The combination of reliability and other focus is known as the steward profile, and credibility and other focus are the professor profile. Now, very interestingly, when they've done research about which profile has the greatest trust, it's as listed here, the doer and the connector have the greatest level of trust. So keep that in mind in terms of where your strengths are now and what you would need to be accentuating and how you come across to others in order to operate as the connector or as the doer in the situations where that is called for. And it's okay to be a chameleon and to toggle across these six profiles in order to meet the needs of the situation. This flexibility is not uh, anything negative. It's actually a sign of maturity when you can toggle to what's appropriate for that situation. Think of a CEO talking to a kindergarten class, for example, or the president of the United States or any country talking to a kindergarten class. Uh, a preschool class, they're going to be using a slightly different uh, tone and um, featuring different aspects of their personality than they do when they're addressing um, uh, people, their, their own peer group, for example. So having that flexibility is a sign of maturity and something that we should be striving for, especially in the roles of marketing, customer service, customer success, customer experience, employee experience and engagement, um, workforce uh, for the future, brand management, marketing operations, demand gen, 
uh, all of these areas are places where we're collecting insights about customers, employees, and partners. When we have a responsibility to our organizations to not only collect those insights and use them within our, our domain, our specialties, but to take those insights and share them with every other functional area across our company, across the entire enterprise or ecosystem in order to help them prevent issues for customers, employees, and partners, and to really drive these things as a way of life, not a program, not a blip in, in, in the, the experience that, you, that these uh, critical key stakeholders have, but as a way of life, the way that we really are. So revisiting our uh, definition of trust, concern for others and confidability are the areas where we need to be experimenting more. So based on what you've heard today, think of some things that you can try out next week to experiment in closing that gap between what's expected and what people actually get by have demonstrating greater concern for others and greater confidability. Circling back to last week's topic of internal partnering, how to toggle, we pointed out that reliability is the essence of that partnering mode where you're an implementer or an administrator and reliability is the essence of being an educator and a tech expert. When others are able to experience and see your concern for others, they will give you permission to toggle into the second partnering mode of I will guide you, to be a facilitator, an influencer, and a problem solver on a significant level when they feel that you're focused on them to the equally or better than yourself. And then finally, the degree to which you are demonstrating confidability will enable you to toggle to the third partnering mode of let's create together, to be a coach and a strategist, to drive even more significant cultural change toward being truly customer-centric, employee-centric, and partner-centric in the DNA of your enterprise. The other thing that was called out in the trusted advisor study was the need to not only increase our confidability and concern for others skills individually and interpersonally, but to increase these four facets of our culture. You can uh, increase these within your own department and also your interactions with other departments and across the whole company in your very important roles of, as stewards of customer intelligence, employee intelligence and partner intelligence by helping to drive a lifetime value mindset for a long-term orientation across your, your enterprise. A collaborative work uh, attitude is uh, demonstrated in this, uh, these six competencies by aligned motivations and transparency and personal connection are represented in our six competencies in the experience value exchange as consistency to intentions and respecting interdependencies. So I welcome you to visit claireaction.com slash team hyphen sport to take a closer look at the experience value exchange and request a demo from me or just jump in. It's affordable. It's something that you would wanna bring your whole department into to build these six competencies together in affecting your a work environment so positively, as well as your whole, whole ecosystem. Finally, I can uh, recommend to you this uh, class that you can take. Uh, it's a self-paced course where there are three to five minute uh, sound bites from me and immediately followed by an application exercise to bring these skills to life and to experiment with better ways of checking assumptions, listening effectively, asking the right questions, communicating remotely, managing intended outcomes and advising and partnering through trust. Please revisit the newsletter, or subscribe so that uh, you can follow along with the, uh, the insights and advice, uh, tinyurl.com slash ease growth news. You can uh, see my article with very specific suggestions for better listening, better transparency, better questions, 
at customerthink.com slash author slash clearaction and visit clearaction.com for playbooks on this new aspect of influencing every organization across your enterprise in adopting and being accountable for improvements in customer experience, employee experience, partner experience, and marketing operations maturity. So you'll find our free FAQs and playbooks there. Also, we have courses. Uh, we're starting a course uh, every Friday for experts, people who um, are keynoters, authors, judges, award recipients, consultants, uh, thought leaders, and um, certified and longtime practitioners of customer, employee, and partner experience. So this is a 90-minute class on Fridays, or you can get the self-paced version in addition to the other uh, things we have there. In closing, I want to emphasize that experience leadership is a step up from experience touch points, which tend to be remedial or reactive to a great degree. Uh, they're very important and necessary, but we need to be giving greater balance beyond experience touch points to experience management, which of course is things like uh, human-centered design, voice of the customer, um, relationship surveys and things like this that uh, net, uh, allow the net promoter system to work. But those things are, are not as scalable. The journey mapping can take years. And experienced leadership then is the third tier. Experienced leadership means company-wide alignment to expectations of your key uh, your, your key stakeholders for growth, which are customers, employees, and partners. So company-wide alignment to these expectations is what's meant by experienced leadership. And I welcome you to join me next week as we talk about four keys of change management that I've found to be extremely helpful throughout my career. Um, so we'll talk about change management next week and please welcome your, your peers in joining these, these uh, mini webinars. I look forward to seeing you next time. And um, thank you for joining me today. Look forward to your continuing comments and questions. Have a good weekend.